Hi guys, welcome to another episode of the Grapplers Academy. Excited to have our first guest on the show today. We've got Shane Curtis in. He's going to come down and break down a bit of uh, one of his matches for us. Excited to go through that and get some insight into him as a player, get a bit of his background and, and some of the things that he's developed over the years in terms of his strategy as well. So really looking forward to this one today. Um, Sai, so anything, anything you want to add into that before we dive in? No, I was uh, just excited to sort of get into this, um, find out a bit more about Shane's training um, and a bit interested into what, what he's got planned for the future as well. But uh, let me start off with uh, sort of like, how did you sort of find the sport or how did you sort of get into grappling really? So, uh, probably like a lot of people, I watched Bruce Lee as a kid and I just, as soon as I watched Bruce Lee, I think it was my mum actually, and we, we were looking for a Jeet Kune Do school. Um, I was probably only about 13 or 14. I did, I went and started that. I didn't, I think I stuck around for maybe two sessions because this is where I lived in Melton Mowbray and now I live in Nottingham. And then when I moved to Nottingham, I wanted to try and pick it up again. And I ended up going to a gym called Gym Combat, which doesn't exist anymore, mm. um, but I did. I did um, Jeet Kune Do there for probably six months, maybe. Um, and I remember seeing all the MMA guys, like grappling and striking and stuff. And I did one MMA class there, maybe two, and before the gym shut. And I was wanting to continue it after that. I ended up just bumping into some people that I used to train with. And they were, they were telling me about this other gym that was opened up which ended up being Nottingham MMA. Oh, nice. So I ended up going down there and not really having a clue about anything, to be honest. I'd done a bit of Jeet Kune Do, as you can expect. It is not practical. It doesn't work. <laughs> <laughs> and not even the old one-inch punch. <laughs> mate, I've tried it on punch bag. It's just... It's not... <laughs> you not okay. trying to it in, like, in a match yet, sort of like someone's... Like you're underneath someone trying to invert sort of quick. <laughs> It's more of a fist bump than anything. <laughs> <laughs> um, and I, um, I started there not in MMA. And six months into my training, I had to have ACL surgery. Because probably four years prior to that, I tore my ACL playing rugby. And my knee just kept collapsing. So I ended up having nine months out after only training for six months. And I was only doing a little bit of MMA, not much, maybe a couple of MMA sessions a week, um, wanting to be an MMA fighter, being obsessed with Conor McGregor, as you can imagine. <laughs> um, and then as soon as I had, was, had the okay to start training again, um, well, before, before I started grappling again, my coach was letting me use the gym for free just to lift weights and condition, and to condition myself. So I was still at the gym three, four times a week whilst I was recovering from my surgery. And mm. I think that kept me, kept me in the loop, kept, me, um, kept my motivation to actually want to train again afterwards. And then I, was, I'd, I had the intention of going straight into MMA and just didn't even really think about grappling, to be honest. And I remember my first session back, I was supposed to do gi, because I was going to start off just doing grappling to start with. I ended up forgetting my gi. My first session back after ACL surgery was Olympic wrestling. Oh, um, I remember. I remember. I, I, I remember thinking it's probably not a good idea, but <laughs> I surprised myself with how well my knee held up. And next thing you know, all I was doing is just grappling, just jujitsu. Uh, I didn't even think about MMA again um, until recently. I sometimes go through phases where I decide I'm going to be an MMA fire and then get bored of it when I realise how much I love jiu-jitsu. But yeah. <laughs> yeah. Before lockdown, I was actually supposed to have an MMA fight in April. Oh, wow. Had, oh, nice. had one booked and everything. And, and then this shit happened. <laughs> yeah. So uh, since diving back into it and focusing just on grappling, how many years have you been training and focusing on the jiu-jitsu and the grappling side of it now? Probably be just over four years now. I think so. I probably... Yeah, four years and a month or two, something oh. like that. And Mostly, uh, do you spend more time gi training or no gi training? Um, well, at our gym, I just I train every session I possibly can do. So we end up doing uh, gi on a Monday, 
gi and no gi on a Tuesday, gi on a Thursday, so gi on a Wednesday, gi and no gi on a Thursday, no gi on a Friday, and then both again on a Saturday. So it's probably about e- about even. I'm much, I never used to really like no gi actually, um, probably just because I wasn't very good at it. Um, just to hold on to. Remember uh, my first no gi comp um, got ankle locked pretty quick in the second round. So I was like, right, I need to sort this out. <laughs> um, I think what I, it was when I when I got a purple belt actually that I ended up doing more nogi. I think in fact, um, you found that quite a lot, don't you? Like across the board when yeah, when purple belt sort of happens, you tend to sort of spread out more to the nogi style and open yourself up to it. I think, I think with yeah, up. with being allowed to do more subs anyway in the advanced category it then makes you want to do even more by opening up the hill hooks and stuff like that i think but so obviously diving like back into you know making a transition from having a bit of a focus from mma to focusing on or preferring more gi and then getting a bit more into no gi like and and the different stuff that's available did that kind of change the way that you played the style that you were doing when you made the transition to no gi or did you try and stick with a pretty similar game plan do you know what? For a while, I stuck to the same game plan until it stopped working. Um, I used to just play guard. Like, I had absolutely no wrestling. Well, not in competition anyway. I'm okay wrestler in the gym I was, but I was too scared to do anything other than sit to my arse when I was in a comp because I would have messed up. Like, if something's not broke, don't try to fix it. <laughs> and everything seemed to be working for me. I just full guard and play from there and it wasn't until I was a purple belt that I started really playing top because I knew that I ended up just kept just getting swept all the time and not even not even getting swept because the other person was any good I'd just give up the sweep and as one of the black belts at our gym just kept shouting at me for giving up the sweep every time because I just like I'm on my back it's fine so I had to start making sure that I could stay on top and then I just focused quite a lot on playing top. But before that, I used to play a lot of knee shield, which if you watch my match with Ben Hills, that is probably about eight or nine minutes of me playing knee shield, which is it's probably one of the most boring matches you'll ever watch. Um, me, just try, me just stopping him from passing, him not passing for about eight, nine minutes. So I thought, you know what, this isn't working now. I should probably do something else. Then I started trying to work a bit more on the leg locks because then, because then I can actually add that in to my knee shield game. Um, and even now, I still play a lot of guard, but I'm, I much prefer playing top as well. well yeah. My coach, he's, he's a big guy, he's about 100 kg, so I get fed up of just playing guard with him. <laughs> just getting, getting smashed. And you'd be surprised for a big guy, he's so quick as well. Mm. So it's with it, with it being an MMA gym, is the is the style of the gym more like MMA grappling style focused, or um, are more guys playing the guard? Surprisingly, not actually. Um, we've got we've got some decent MMA fighters that train at our gym, like Dean Truman, uh, Carl Booth, but predominantly they're strikers anyway. Um, so their style doesn't particularly translate into into kind of into grappling like that anyway um so i don't know most we, we play a lot of guard paul lukowski our coach he generally plays a lot of guard himself for a big guy so we he just tends to teach more guard than he does top actually and we've got separate wrestling ca- classes anyway um with charles labor he's a uh, eight and O mma fighter as well in fact, he back in the day, I remember hearing stories of him tapping Eddie Bravo out in the gym. So he's pretty, he's pretty decent himself. Um, and he was training back in the day with like Dan Hardy, uh, Dean Amersinger, Judo Jimmy, like these people that we still kind of train with as well. So yeah, it'd be surprisingly, surprisingly, despite being an MMA gym, it is there, but there's a lot of guard. A lot of guard, and now more towards the kind of the leg lock side of things as well. As Paul's been competing more in grapple fests alongside me too, so he needs to work on that as well. You sort of found that your training's better to orientate more towards the leg locking, then, as a put like or favourable more towards leg locking, as opposed to that other limbs and other kind of joint locks. 
Um, I, I mean, I think so now, more now, just because, not necessarily because I'm better at that, just because I know that I've got to, I've got to do it. Because yeah. to beat everyone, you've got to be able to do everything, haven't you? Or oh, at least yeah. be aware of it. Like, I've, I've gone through now just like letting myself get in leg locks just so I can escape. Like I do a training with uh, Lloyd Cooper and Sean Madonna. And one thing Lloyd says to me is, I've got to let people start with me in a heel hook or something, like just to escape because I'm not going to get better at it. People aren't going to enter my legs at my gym half the time anyway. So I've mm-hmm. kind of got to let them in order for me to be able to escape. Because um, he, he'll catch me, Lloyd, when he'll be like, you, that, you could have lasted longer. It's like, mm, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I've got I've, tried, I've been working more on like defending leg locks and then countering off of them as well um, so sort of like, that, that's sort of favouring your sort of your mindset now then for the way you're training and the way you're sort of approaching most training sessions is trying to improve your leg lock defence your leg lock escapes and then going into the counters or have you is it sort of differ session to session um it, it, I guess it just depends. Um, depends on what I want to work on that particular day. I I don't necessarily go into a training session thinking right today I'm going to work on this. I guess it. Just, I just feel it out. Depends how I'm feeling on the day. I suppose if I've seen a cool video on YouTube earlier or something, uh, maybe try that out. Um, or depending on what Paul's teaching, really. Um, I've been working more on my passing as well because, like I said, my passing was not very good before. And if anything, I think that might be one of my stronger points now because nice. I focus on it so much. Um, and now, after all that, I'm re- I'm trying to really focus on my wrestling. Yeah, because that suppose um, to the ground. You know, you you're a really active competitor, um, and there's quite a good scene down there with local gyms that you know in the vicinity in Nottingham as well. Do, do you find that you end up training like throughout the year with that competition mindset in place, or is it kind of like gearing up for when you know you've got something coming up? Uh, like you say, because I'm such an active competitor, it's just the same all year round, really. Nothing really changes because if yeah. I'm competing at least once, twice a month, then there's no, I think, I think it's, it'll be pointless changing that mindset because I've always got a competition around the corner mm. to look forward to um, and something to train for. So I think the mindset just stays the same all year round, just that kind of purely competitive mindset. So have you found... The, sorry, go on, Bob. Go on, after you, mate. I was about to say, so have you found the adjusting the training volume and adjusting the sort of mindset recently then with the current like lockdown and... Everything that's happened? It's been difficult. It has been difficult. Um, I'm, I've been going a little bit mad trying to find something else to do. Thankfully, I've been able to teach my housemate how to grapple. Nice. So I managed to get some mats from the gym and whatnot. So that's been pretty decent. Unfortunately, my girlfriend doesn't want to learn how to grapple. <laughs> she just turns around and goes to me, yeah, but I can still hit you from here. <laughs> I was like, yeah, but I can break your knee. And she'll go, but you won't. Sorry. <laughs> like, um, <laughs> reply. Yeah. Sounds exactly. like she's calling you bluff. I, I, feel, uh, I feel a slapping in coming on. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> to be fair, like, my, my missus is exactly the same. She doesn't want anything to do with any jujitsu. And if I ever try and do anything on her, I'm just going to get a punch square in the nuts or my eyes yeah. poked or something like yeah, that. So I've exactly. learned to leave it alone now, to be fair. <laughs> You've done that before, so... I've, I've got to be wary, otherwise I'm going to collapse on the floor after getting hit in the nuts. <laughs> <laughs> well, I assume you've also like been being pretty active with skateboarding as well. Are you, are you finding that that's trying. taking up a bit of your time? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. You'd be surprised. It's actually quite a good workout for your core yeah. and your legs, actually. Um, so it's, it's it's something to do. It's kind of like starting jujitsu new again because yeah. you're all hurting yourself. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Well, this is what I was thinking, um, and I, I used to skateboard quite a lot when I was a kid, but I'm probably terrified of doing it now because I'll, I know for a fact that I'll end up injuring my knees. So I was watching a couple yeah. of the videos that you put up, and I was like, this guy's just got a, he just wants to injure himself. He can't you know do what, jiu-jitsu, though? so just skateboarding. <laughs> I've, just, I've not injured myself like at all. My knees don't even hurt a bit from skateboarding. I'm normally falling backwards, so I just land on my hands. Mm. Um, and I think because... 
how conditioned our bodies were to jujitsu before, my body's still conditioned because I'm still hurting myself. If that makes sense. Yeah. So, like, watching like there's a lack lack and Giles did a podcast with Dan Strauss, so he was talking about how quickly your body comes deconditioned to grappling with a matter of weeks and um it takes a lot longer than that to become conditioned again so i think because i'm still like falling over i'm still knocking myself that it's not actually as bad as it would be if i'd never done anything before yeah well that that so we did get um we did get a listener's question it kind of seems like quite appropriate to throw it in now seems that we're on topic so we had a question from sam quinn he asked does falling <laughs> off his skateboard help him improve his fast guard pulls? <laughs> you know, he messaged me the other day. He was like, I've sent my question in. <laughs> <laughs> if anything, with a skateboard underneath, maybe even faster. <laughs> <laughs> so you should expect when you're back into competition, you roll onto the mat on the skateboard straight well, into we, the guard pull. Both of us were saying we'll have a match together on Grapple Fest. We'll grind the hand, we'll grind the handrail and we'll have a game of skate instead. <laughs> When it starts on the back. <laughs> that sounds like a pretty interesting match, to be honest. Well, I've got into... Really mix up the rule set, but... <laughs> I've got him to start skateboarding now as well, so he'll be hurting himself too. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Hasn't he just come off the back of an injury fairly recently himself? He's, when is he not injured? Yeah, that's a good point. <laughs> he told me just, yeah, Jackson Souza popped his shoulder or something in, yeah. in uh, January. Like an absolute bell end as well. Yeah, I've heard the story and yeah, he told me. Yeah, just because he was mighty that he couldn't tap a purple belt. <laughs> <laughs> Wait till after the bell and yeah, work something on. And I, I told my coach, and he went, "Yeah, I've heard he's a dick." <laughs> yeah. What makes me laugh though is like I was listening to the um, Hinger and Cornelius podcast, and they had him on, and they were like, "Oh, he's this great, amazing guy. He's come from such hardship." He's worked, he's done this, he's such a nice guy. And then I was like, you've not heard the fucking story I've heard though, have you? It's not my mate's arm. Yeah. 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 He probably realised he was a bit of a sandbagger though, to be fair. Yeah. Uh, yeah, that's true. The snap out of the show. But uh, back on to sort of like your training, like you say that you're training and your mindset doesn't really change year round. But like, when you competing so frequently, do you have a, like a ritual or like anything that you do on competition day that helps you sort of approach the competition in a set mindset or a set sort of focus point? Um, not really, actually. Um, when I used to compete, when I was a white belt and a blue belt, I was terrified of competing. Like, so many times I would think to myself, right, shall I pretend that I've forgotten my contact lenses so I can't compete? Like, I'd never did. I'd never pulled out. Like as soon as I step on the mat, everything's fine. Mm. And that's. And then I always go to. I think to myself, oh yeah, I forgot. I can actually do this. Yeah. And I think that's what's gotten me through it. Like even to now. Like there's nothing I do. I I train generally the night before training as well. That's one thing that I do like to do. If, if anything, rather than the day of, I will train the day before. Not necessarily hard. I just think that if it's going to keep, it keeps me loose. Yeah. So I suppose that's quite interesting as well, actually, isn't it? Like, um, I was thinking about this before when you were saying with the frequency of competition, were you competing more or less frequently at white and blue belt? And do you think being more active as a purple belt has kind of taken a bit of that fear away from, from the situation? Yeah, definitely. Like, I probably, I was a blue belt for, what, 18 months and I competed maybe six times maybe seven um white belt i only did two comps at white belt but and then at purple i, I don't know how many i've done yeah. <laughs> so yeah i think the more frequently i've been doing it the easier it's become to just walk on the mat and just just like oh yeah it's just another day mm. and i think training with other people from other gyms as well helps because you're still friends with them but you don't train with them every day so you don't know their style so it's a little bit more like a competition i think it's like the element of stranger danger where you don't know what's yeah. coming, you don't know how they're going to respond to stuff that you do as well. Exactly. I think that also brings me on to the point where sometimes a brand new white belt can be more difficult to roll with than a white belt that's been there for a month because he doesn't have a clue. He's just doing anything and everything. Whereas with a white belt that's been training, you know what they're going to do. Yeah. 
you've been teaching them or whatever. They've been kind of conditioned to move a certain way, so they exactly. kind of fall into the patterns that they're supposed to. Yeah, it's funny with my housemate, it just makes me laugh that some of the things that he do, like some of them's like, oh, that's kind of worked, and some of them are just rolling his back as well. <laughs> so, <laughs> quite funny in that respect. It's quite interesting that, isn't it? Like, we were having a little bit of a similar conversation about this, maybe this week or last week, but the the kind of consensual nature of what you're saying that you're going to be doing with your train, like in training partners in jiu-jitsu, it's like we're both here to do jiu-jitsu, but then translating the benefits of that over to like a more of a self-defense or an MMA aspect. And like mm. the likelihood is if you, you know, you're fighting somebody who doesn't do jiu-jitsu, they're not going to be happy and just pulling guard and having an yeah. exchange on the legs. <laughs> like, like you say, with the white belts, it's going to be something unexpected. And, yeah. And like, I think it's important for people who do train any martial arts, but probably particularly jiu-jitsu is like just realizing that just because you do jiu-jitsu doesn't mean that they're going to follow the rules of what you want to play or do with it. Yeah, um, that's very true. I mean, if I ever got into an altercation, I would probably just kick him in the dick and run off. <laughs> so, <laughs> I mean, if all else fails... Hmm? Or scale off. Oh, yeah, perfect. <laughs> I'll fall, I'll, I'll the, fall over then. That's, that'll be the time I fall over. Was the uh, dick kick technique something that you learned in Jake, uh, Duke Kondo? Funnily enough, yes. <laughs> <laughs> I found a photo of me on the old website a while ago of me, of someone, of um, me holding the pad at my groin while someone kicks it. See, that's so, yeah. a daring drill. <laughs> yeah, tell me about it. Kind of reminds me of that side, video. I don't know what I was thinking. <laughs> Have you ever seen the video where the, I'm going to assume he's a science teacher, is laying on his back with a cinder block and a face visor on, and then he's telling his, I don't know what the purpose of the exercise is, but he tells one of his students to hit the cinder block with a sledgehammer, but yeah. he just misses the sledgehammer and hits him straight in the groin. So. Yeah, I've seen that. Yeah. <laughs> Whoa. Uh, but like, yeah. I mean, Jits is pretty notorious for having dodgy outfits and rash guards <laughs> and the shorts that people wear. I can't imagine Jeet Kune Do is any better, to be honest. Thankfully, you just wear whatever you wanted. Oh, really? Yeah, just anything and everything. Like trousers, T-shirts. I mean, the instructor was a bit weird. Um, he'd, wear, he'd wear like a full-on Kung Fu outfit. <laughs> nice. Like a sleeveless red one and a handlebar moustache sort of thing, or pretty much. <laughs> proper I remember like when Ken sort of ripped off sleeves, all <laughs> <laughs> <Poor Lance> gloves. <laughs> it'd make no. It'd, you'd go bare fist, and it'd make you punch the bag like this until your knuckles bled, and it's just make you carry on. So, because apparently, know. if you punch like that, your opponent is not going to see it. If unless if you punch unless you punch like that, if you, as if you do like that. I mean, like you go every fight on the UFC roster is missing a trick there. I guess I'm <laughs> yeah. Pretty much, she's like, don't don't turn your knuckle when you punch because it's quicker if you don't. <laughs> Wasted <laughs> energy. You fair in that how like much you used to punch, like it's very straight down the middle. Yeah, actually, maybe maybe they, maybe he's got a point. <laughs> you actually, have a point with that. <laughs> Less power though, I think. Yeah, you Would won't you be able to sit into that shot not, and really turn. You can't turn it over, can you? Put your no. shoulder into that. More of like a jab. No. So um, with your sort of grappling as well, how would you sort of like describe your the way you play at the moment in competition? Or even in like, and does it differ to the way you play in the gym at the moment? Um, it can do, yeah. Um, at the gym, I know, I know that if they get tapped, it doesn't matter. So... I will try and open myself up to do new things. So, because you need to, you, you need to do that. If you're going to do that, you got to do it at the gym, aren't you? Yeah. So, I'll be, I'll, I will play different things at the gym than I will in com. Like, I will wrestle in the gym. I will go for takedowns, and I'll surprise myself at how good my wrestling actually is compared to how 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 bad everyone thinks it is. <laughs> <laughs> I think I've only ever shot two takedowns in a comp, and it was at the same. It was in the. It was in the same match and I didn't get points for it okay. I don't yeah right this is, this is a good one it was at the Nottingham Open um, it was just after I got my purple belt it was in the absolute and apparently because I shot with both of my knees on the floor and completed the takedown I didn't get points for it twice 
I'm, I'm, trying, yeah. to, I'm trying to see how that one pieces together, to be honest. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Makes no sense, does it? I still no. would, but I would have won my extra four points had I, <laughs> had I actually got my points for my takedowns. That's ridiculous. It, yeah, no, that, that's not a rule, is it? <laughs> My coach was on the side. Paul, Paul was on the side, just thinking, "What is going on?" He he went off to find Victor a steamer to go and have a go. <laughs> I suppose off the back of that as well, then, like with that in mind, do you prefer um, competing for points or sub only? I much prefer sub only. I think. I mean, yeah, I guess it depends, but um, I think all round sub only because you've got a better array of submissions, haven't you? Mm. Right, we're especially like I remember doing the doing the uh, Empire Grappling uh, in the Nogi. And there's so many, so many positions, like, could he hook you from here? But I can't. <laughs> <laughs> Do you so, think there's like a happy medium on rule set? Like, what, what would be your preferred rule set if, if points were to be included, let's say, for example, or, you know, if you're looking at different stuff that's been before, like the EBI rule set compared versus the ADCC rule set, do you have like a preferred one that you would compete in all the time if you could? I guess it's quite subjective, isn't it? Like some people prefer EBI, but then you can just curl up on a ball for 10 minutes and then hold on to him, can't you, afterwards? Um, I'd probably say ADCC rules. I think that seems, that seems to me to be the best because then you can try things without sacrificing points for half the match. And then if that fails, at least you know that you can try and pull it back from with, with the points. Mm. So... Yeah. We were talking about this a couple of weeks ago, weren't we? Like, I, yeah. we were saying that ADCC is probably one of the fairer rule sets out there. And I would probably yeah. definitely when it gets to like that higher level end of competition, there's probably a bit of gamesmanship with uh, playing the timer oh, of course until there the points is. come in, which there's always going to be in any rule yeah. set. But it's the same happened with EBI, didn't it? At the beginning, it was fantastic. Everyone yeah. loved it until everyone started working it out and playing the game. What happened? Um, yeah. Last on Sunday night sub as well, didn't it? With um, didn't go his way though. That band of thought and Checo. Yes. Um, he tried to sort of back off and play the sort of play the game, and then got caught in the overtime. Yeah. Thankfully, he didn't. He didn't win. But <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I was I was quite worried that Craig Jones was not going to beat Wagner in overtime. To be honest, because you know, Wagner's like on the back. I was Craig, expecting Craig got that. He didn't. He didn't seem to come out, or did he? Like he just didn't seem to get out the first gear when he had when Craig Jones on his back. He just sort of, yeah, kind of like I'm alright. I don't think he was expecting Craig to finish him as quick as he did. No, no, definitely not. With Wagner being smaller, I think it would be easier of him to to turn in Craig into Craig guard Mm. or spin to his back or something like. So I think he thought that maybe it would have been easier for him because he just kind of went like that and just stuck his arm up, didn't he? Expecting yeah. Craig Ross to sub him. And then, and I suppose Craig, that's, uh, that's an interesting uh, like concept to think about as well, isn't it, in training throughout the week? Like, do you, like, definitely, I think, I don't know what my answer is, but like, do you and should you train those bad positional training sessions where you start in those kind of like EBI rule sets? Yeah, I don't particularly train for EBI, but I will let people get me into bad positions. Mm. Like, I'll have, I'll make, even just because if I'm being stupid, like, I'll be, I'll be talking to someone and then I'll just not be thinking and I'll be in a triangle, but oh, here we go. <laughs> I think he's going to tap me now. It's just like. <laughs> I think it's a good way to get the most out of, like, some, some of the less experienced training partners that you've got as well. Obviously, yeah. it's important to be put in those positions by you, like, you better as in the gym, you know, people who can sub you ordinarily as well. So you've got yeah. the opportunity to work out of it. But as long as you, you know, giving them something like the, the lower belts, if they can get into that position and you can work through it and it's giving them something as well as making the, the round more interesting for yourself as well. Like, is that something that you kind of yeah, sort, of, sort of tend to do? Yeah. What I'll find is if I feel like I'm not getting the most out of a role just because it's with, without being disrespectful, it's, if it's just a bit too easy, then I'll try and put myself in a bad position in order to then get more of the workout and then be able to fight my way out of it because there's a big difference between Paul putting me in a triangle and like a 70 kg blue belt like it's not quite the same so yeah. I'll, I'll allow myself to do that I will not allow myself well I'll try not to get in a triangle with Paul 
<laughs> but if you do, you can always turn around and say, you know, I just wanted to get in that position to kind of feel it out and see exactly. if I could. I wanted yeah. to give you a chance. I know your shoulders are hurting. <laughs> you write the um, I, I suppose, <laughs> lastly, for me as well, before we dive into the matches, like with the training volume that you've got through the week that you talked about before, how do you fit your, or if you do fit any strength and conditioning in around that? Well, um, I just do it. I just did it before. I've got, I, I train, I generally do three days a week. Um, I, I, have, I work with Brotherhood Health and Performance, Andrew Hardwick, and um, I generally, yeah, just normally do Monday, Wednesday and Fridays, give or take. Um, he's quite good with speaking to me. If I can't do something, then he'll be able to change something around for me. Um, but I just make sure, I make sure I get that strength and conditioning in. Um, more, it's more strength training than conditioning, because I find rolling itself is the conditioning part of it. Yeah. Um, yeah. So yeah, I just I just got to force myself to do it as much as I dislike it. It feels great afterwards. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Fair enough. And how do you sort of um, like off the back of that question? Did you have any sort of specific nutritional requirements, or are you sort of quite relaxed with your food? Um, so leading up to May fight, I was I was in a calorie deficit before that, so I was quitting weight because I was actually going to fight at seventy. Mm. Because it was day before, so I was going to cut down and then do a bit of water. I was, do you know what? Though I was kind of, I'm kind of glad that he got cancelled because I, I, I don't know how I would have made seventy without killing myself. <laughs> <laughs> um, it was like I'm the light, the lightest I've been in pretty much at the moment, seventy six and a half the other day, which is not too bad. But even then, I don't have a great deal of fat left to lose mm. or water. And I've lost. I know I can lose a decent amount of water, but it would, it would have sacrificed my performance potentially. Yeah. Um, yeah. But with my diet, I just try and roughly keep it around two thousand two hundred calories. I think because I'm able to now go to the gym to lift weights as of this week, um, me and Andrew are increasing my calories, so I'm going to be in a bit of a surplus because we're going on to more of a, a hypertrophy program because I've not been able to train as much as I have been able to. Mm. Basically, I'm putting a little bit of size on, building some tissue. So I look forward to super heavyweight. Oh, yeah. God. <laughs> <laughs> you know what, though? I find bigger people easier to grapple, to generally, because they're slower. You've got, you got smaller spaces to go through as well. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Well, I think the, the lightest I've been since training MMA and, and grappling is unbelievably. I, I think I managed to get myself down to 78 kilos, which is yeah. absolutely insane. <laughs> I, had the, I had the bizarre notion that I want to be as light as possible and as strong as possible. <laughs> and uh, yeah, I didn't feel good. Well, you know, <laughs> uh, 92. Yeah, I, 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 remember, I do remember meeting you the first time when we were in a roll thinking, oh God, here we go. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to get crushed. <laughs> Well, we're kind of going to what I was just talking about there. You've got a good level of strength. For what, what are you walking around that typically? About 70, 77 on average at the moment. Yeah, I'm strong for that. Like a steel bending, strong grapper. <laughs> it's like the perfect. And you know what? I've also gone vegetarian as well. And, I've, okay. I've, and I don't feel like I've lost any strength in the slightest. Do you, do you find that that's like... If, so that's quite interesting as well because that's not really something I've done well I've never, I've never done that from a nutritional point of view but you said before you fit your s and c before jets training is that like immediately before at the gym or is it like a couple of hours before because for um, me i'll get a workout in in the afternoon strength and conditioning probably a good five hours before i'm actually getting to the gym to do any training grappling wise so how do you okay. find that that affects your energy maybe finish my session half an hour before i'm supposed to grapple so yeah pretty much immediately before I don't really find that that affects me. Um, much rather do it before than after, because because I'll be too tired from grappling to do my form correctly afterwards. Um, but no, I don't feel that really has a, has a has a problem, to be honest. How long are your workouts typically on the on the strength side of it? Uh, I guess it depends on what we're focusing on at that point. Um, roughly thirty to forty five minutes. Yeah. So kind of standard. Strength, Still workout. big compound movement, squat, bench, deadlifts, pull ups. Yeah, yeah, pretty much. That's pretty much most of it. Some like plyometric stuff that yeah. was when I was for the MMA fight. Um, there's a little bit more isolation work now 
just to build a bit of tissue. He's got me doing some bicep curls, so I'll be going off the mat like that. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Bicep curls have got to help the steel snapping as well, surely. Surely, yeah. I mean, by, surely. I don't see why they'd stop with anything. Like, help, it wouldn't help with anything. Like, sprawling and getting underhooks on someone. Well, oh, I'm oh, going to be perfectly oh, honest. Oh, I, was, oh, I was having a chat with Sai about this the other week, and I think some of the isolation training movements, uh, like, all joking aside, really functional for grappling. Like, yeah. leg extensions, bicep curls. Um, yeah. Bench press. <laughs> Nice <laughs> press, yeah. It was pretty much my side control escape. Is <laughs> so I actually remember, um, like rolling. You seen uh, Lee Chadwick? Uh, yes. So I was rolling yeah. with him a while back, and I managed to like isolate an arm, and I was doing my best to just try and extend the arm. Hamstrings were cramping up, glutes were cramping up, my back was going to spasm, and he's there, he just looks at me, and just curls his arm and goes, "Bicep curls, that lad." And I was like, I just sort of, I'm, I'm done. You know what? It's funny you say that. I always have a joke in the gym. Uh, if I do that, I just call it the Arnie. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I'm just sort of really trying to work up my strength now to just be able to do that to somebody. I'm like, it's like I mean, my balls yeah. <laughs> I, I well, like to be that. fair, I've also seen him throwing those Atlas stones around as well, to be honest. And they must be about 130 kilos. So, yeah. Oh, blimey. <laughs> the strongest human I've grappled. <laughs> really? Yeah. Wow. Okay. I might have to, I might have to try and give that a go afterwards. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, before we get into your match, um, do you want to give us a bit of a background story behind it? And we'll, uh, then we'll get it lined up and we'll go into it. Yeah. Cool. Um, so, um, David Levery put out a bit of a, a post about who wants to fight me because... He, he was he couldn't find anyone. I've done I've had quite a few matches on role models now because they're one of my sponsors, and so far I'm undefeated at role models. Nice. That's that's all the way from my blue belt competitions. I think I've won gold at every blue belt comp I did for them, and then I have won uh, three of my sub only matches, and then drew two of them now. One with Ben Hills, and now one with uh, Tom, um, and loads of people just kept tagging Tom in the in the thing in the post and David was like not really sure who this is but do you want him I was like yeah yeah, yeah I'll take him like I knew he and recently got his purple belt I know he, he trains full time as well actually I think he quit his job to train full time wow. lucky for Tom um <laughs> and <laughs> and then I'd, I'd already knew him anyway I've met him before I'd, I had a bit of a chat with him I'd say back in October no November on SSF, um, he fought one of my training partners, a deal, and beat a deal quite quickly, from like maybe 30 seconds, knee barred him. And I struggled to, to attack a deal. Like, I don't know the last time I did when it wasn't in the gi. So I was like, okay, I want this match. Because um, a, a deal is a good grappler in his own right. I think he might be better in the gym than he is in the competition. And he's pretty more, much more of an MMA fighter than he is a grappler. Uh, but if if he struggles, then I wanted to get that match. And then afterwards, um, another mate of mine, Danny Tyler, um, who he's done grapple fest a couple of times. He's an MMA fighter. He rolled with um, Tom at that ADCC camp in January, and he was telling me he rolled with him. He's like, I've never felt someone back. To he, he, he literally went, I've never felt some of back control so tight, like a seatbelt. And we do train with Sean Madonna. And when Sean Madonna's on my back, I'm getting choked. Like, it's 90% of the time, I'm getting triangled or choked. And I was like, what, even better than Sean? And he was like, yeah. So I was, I was really quite surprised um, to ha what he had to say about him. And as I said, he's got incredible passing, strong knee shield. And, but, and then he went, but I think you'll beat him. <laughs> so I was like, all right, okay, I need this match. And yeah, it was a good match. I, I really enjoyed it. I really enjoyed the match itself. He's a really nice guy. We had a good chat at the end afterwards, exchanged some techniques and stuff. And I know he's, I like to call him Ash Williams' prodigy because he uh, <laughs> trains under Ash Williams. Um, oh. He's made trading partners, as far as I'm aware. 
I've seen him around as well before. He's been on Grapple Fest before uh, Josh Sherrington on Grapple Fest. Yeah. Um, Josh beat him, um, but it was a good match. He had Josh in a bit of trouble. And I've fought Josh before as well. I beat Josh by an advantage at Empire Ground Flip Empire. I'm holding on to that though. <laughs> <laughs> um, that was a that was a tough match as well. <laughs> that was tougher than this match. Yeah, Josh is a handful. I remember afterwards wondering why my ankle was hurting. And then I rewatched the match, he just stamps on it <laughs> as he tries to pass. I was like, ah, okay, that's why. <laughs> So he's got like the same intensity in the training room as he has when he's in competition. Really? Okay. I want to. I want to roll with him. In fact, he said to me, he says, "I'll never understand why people pull guard, but I'd like to roll with you more." <laughs> <laughs> uh, that was funny, but yeah. So um, all the all those things combined together in the build up to the fight did that kind of like change your mindset going into the match, or did you go in there wanting to play? A particular game plan that you put into place ordinarily? Um, I don't know. Really. I don't know really. I mean, I've got I've got a really bad habit as well of not warming up before I go on go on the mat. I think, oh, I'll be fine. I won't gas out. And oh, I went in there. I didn't really warm up. And within a couple of minutes, I was blowing. It was not good. Um, which I did the same. I did I, I did I did the same thing on Grapple Fest as well, where I just. So, but I'm okay. I'm fine. It's just frustrating that I think, why didn't I warm up? And then, but because I didn't warm up, my game plan in my head kind of disappeared a little bit mm. uh, because I was just trying to kind of keep my wits while I was trying to get my my energy back. Um, but the game the game plan generally is pull guard. Like when I when I when I compete, I'm normally just pull guard because I know that if I'm, I know that I'll probably not. I'm just a bit too scared to try and take them down. If I'm honest with you, because even it's it's a silly thing to be scared of because I can wrestle. It's just I'm in the in the back of my mind thinking, what if I get guillotined? Yeah. So it's normally the same mindset for every match is pull guard unless they do. Well, that'll probably kick us off quite nicely into lining that match up and, and talking about the the stand up side of it. So should we get that queued up and dive yeah. into it? Yeah, let's go. Good. Bit.